Hello and welcome to the next installment of the Project Feline Devlog series, a series about designing and developing a game from start to finish. My name is Raymond, and this episode I have some exciting new updates to share with you all. We have a new level to play through in the game, we have some updates to the wall ride mechanic, and a new website where you can find all the information about the game in one place. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first version of this prototype debuted about eight months ago from today. That was quite a while ago, and since then not much has changed in terms of levels. So I thought one of the things I'd like to put in this next update is a new environment where players can play around a little bit more with the mechanics and get more of a feel of what kind of experience this might turn out to be in the future. Building levels is far from my biggest strength, so any feedback or criticism is welcome for what I've built so far. So to build this new level, I thought I'd try my hand at downloading some asset packs from the Unreal Marketplace to make the level look nice. Ultimately, this approach didn't work out, as the modular pieces that came with these packs just didn't seem to fit together all too well, and it became very difficult to try and build a fun level and make it look pretty at the same time. I later started to familiarize myself with the industry standard pipeline for building levels, and for many games it's common practice to start building a level out of basic geometry first and making it look pretty later. This is commonly referred to as the white box or grey box stage, with this approach in mind, I decided to just start building with basic geometry with the help of Unreal's Geometry Brush Tools, formerly known as the BSP Brush Tools. These are amazing tools that allow you to build and customize geometry directly in the editor, without having to model the geometry elsewhere in another 3D program. I'm so happy I learnt that this existed, as they seem to be the perfect tools for the grey boxing stage. So I decided to build this level and do a few live streams along the way and I hosted those earlier this week. Huge thanks to all who joined in the live streams and were involved in the creation of this level. I really appreciate all the feedback and support. And here is the result. This new level is now available in a new updated build linked in the description. Feel welcome to give it a playthrough and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Moving on to the next topic, the wall ride. Since the wall ride mechanic was initially developed, it's gone through a lot of code cleanups and optimizations, but not many changes to how it plays. I think in its current state, the mechanic has a lot of unexplored potential, so I decided to make some changes to its functionality and see what happens. Based on your feedback over the past several months, the wall ride now has some challenging limitations. In this new update, the character will no longer travel continuously upwards and you will no longer need to keep the jump key held down. Instead, the character will automatically start riding nearby walls while airborne and the character will ride the wall in an arc trajectory. The character additionally won't stay on the wall forever, and will detach from the wall after reaching the end of the arc's trajectory. After playing around with this mechanic myself for a bit, I felt like having that limitation in place made the game feel a lot more dynamic, and it sort of kept the player on their toes a bit more, as it gives them more to do in that primary game loop of jumping from wall to wall. And that's not all folks, I have another feature too that I'm excited to talk about. Wall run combos, that's right. In previous versions of this game where you'd have to hold the jump key to run on walls, you could release it to detach and then press it again quickly to perform a wall jump. Wall jumps are now performed a lot more simply by simply hitting the jump key while wall running. When this happens though, the character's suit will start a combo counter, and this combo will increase for each time you jump and land on another wall without touching the ground. Now the cool bit about this is that the character's wall run speed and wall jump velocity will be multiplied by this combo number, meaning the higher combo count you get, the faster you'll be able to ride on walls and the faster you can reach the end of the level. I do have some other ideas as well that I still need to experiment with, such as the use of a stamina bar or energy meter or something along those lines that might even integrate with other areas of the game later on. But for the meantime, this is what I have so far. So this and the new level are all available in a new update that I've linked in the description below. So if you wanna go and check it out and play it for yourself, feel welcome to, and feel welcome to leave any criticism or feedback in the comments of this video or on the community discord. I would really appreciate to know what you guys think. And speaking of the link in the description, that brings us to our next topic for this video. 
Yes, that's right. I have a new link where you can download the game from a nice looking web page instead of a Google Drive link. This web page has some nice graphics on it and also some information about the game that wasn't previously available. And not only is it a web page, but I'm hosting it through a service called Itch. For those not familiar with Itch, it's basically like an indie version of Steam where people can upload their games and put them up for sale or put them up for free and people can download it, they can leave comments on it. It's got forums as well, it's got a whole lot of features. So not only does it let you create a web page, but it's its own game platform as well, so that you guys can engage with me a bit more easily regarding the game. And even better, if you download the Itch app to your PC, you'll be able to automatically download updates for this game instead of having to go and hunt them down manually from that Google Drive link. If there's any more information you'd like to see on the page, let me know in the comments. Click that download button, I have the Linux and Windows builds available there. Give it a play, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hey, thanks for watching this far into the video. Had a bit of extra time on my hands, so I thought I'd answer a few questions from you guys in the community discord, which if you haven't joined yet, link in the description, check it out. All right, so let's see what you guys had to ask. First question from firebob137, do you have any advice on spreading the word about your game? I'd say the best thing to do is to just talk about it as much as you can. Um, I know recently we passed the 10k subscriber milestone and I think to get myself there, I know that's not a huge amount in YouTube terms, but I think how I got there was just making these devlog videos and sharing them around in places like Discord and Reddit and Facebook and Twitter. Um, tweeting I think is really good, there's a lot of uh, good threads like Screenshot Saturday and those sorts of things where you can sort of share your, what you're working on and you know it might catch the attention of a few people. Probably one thing I would think about is uh, for the people in the community asking these questions, how did you find my content? And then maybe try and do something where you can get the scenario that you had finding me happening with your game so that you can find people can find your stuff the same way you found mine. That might be one way to go. Again, I still like to expand my reach a bit, so I don't I wouldn't say I'm an expert on this, but that's just what I found works for me. Next question from Foz. How do you stay motivated on a single project for such a long period of time? Well, um, yeah, I'll be honest, it is really difficult to stay motivated, I will say. I guess the best thing you can do is just try to make the space you're in fun to be in and make it a productive space. I think your environment plays a huge role in that whole motivation area. Um, if you've got like a working space you can go to with other motivated individuals, that'll help you heaps into keeping motivated in your project. Because if you're surrounded by other people that are also super motivated, it's gonna rub off on you and you're gonna be like that as well. You also get people to talk to and you know, you can all talk about your games and, and things you've learned from doing it. I have a few friends I keep in touch with and every so often we'll talk about that sort of thing. Unfortunately though, I don't really have an office or a working space. I'm just kind of here in my bedroom making things on my own. But I've tried to do the best with what I've had here. Like if I've hung up a few, you know, artworks around the place, I've put up some goals, uh, I've written them down and just blue tacked them to my wall just to kind of make it a bit more of an office and a bit more of a productive space I'd want to be in. And then, um, yeah, try and minimize distractions as well. So environment's a huge bit and community as well. And I think having this Discord and this YouTube channel has definitely helped me to stay motivated just with the amount of engagement I get from you guys. So I think that's a huge part too. When you've got a good environment and you've got the will to do it, then you're basically set, I think. And then another related question from Arvio Gun. Do you find it hard to stay focused on one project and not starting another when you have a great idea? Um, yeah, that's a weird one. I, I haven't really struggled with that all that much. I tend to pigeonhole very easily, so I kind of have the opposite problem, where I'll get so focused on one part of the project that I won't have any other ideas for anything else. That's the issue I'm faced with, and I think that was evident in my last episode when I had worked two months on a settings menu. I think that's a perfect example of my flaw where I'll get super hyper-focused on one particular element and forget everything else. So I would like to be in more of a position where I do generate more ideas and it's easier for me to do. Um, so I kind of have the opposite problem. But if you, are, um, if you are struggling with that issue though of you're having too many ideas at once and you want to go and work on all different ones, I would just write them down first and just have them in a place so that they don't disappear. Write them down in like a Trello board or, or a notepad or something. And then maybe, you know, once a week, if you're not feeling happy with what you're already working on, uh, just, you know, 
reflect on the ideas you've written down that week and sort of evaluate which ones you'd like to work on based on your current goals. I think that would be the most pragmatic approach to it. So yeah, thank you so much guys for this questions. I know the Q&A announcement was a little bit short notice. Like I literally, while I was editing this video, found I had a bit of free time to to do one of these segments. But for the ones that, you know, put some questions in, I really appreciate it. If you want to see more Q&A segments, I think I made a Q&A video a while back. I'd love to do another dedicated one at some point in the future. So make sure to join the Discord. You can leave your questions here or in the comments of this video, and I'll try to get around to as many as I can. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, I'd like to give a huge shout out to my Patreons for helping support this month's production. I'd also like to thank this month's fan art submissions. You guys have some wonderful illustrations that put a huge smile on my face when I see them. So huge thanks to the people making the fan art. And of course, thanks to you guys who help comment and subscribe on my videos. I really appreciate all the engagement and the support and feedback. If you wanna see more content like this on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you don't miss the next upload from me. And be sure to follow me on the social medias, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the Twitters. I'll be posting some updates there. And also be sure to join the community Discord. I like to engage a lot in that space. So if you have any questions, feedback or anything, or fan art submissions, be sure to join the community Discord linked in the description. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.